Hello guys and welcome to a new Star Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. In this one I have for you a preview of the 715th Infantry Division, a new division available in the upcoming Men of Steel DLC. As a disclaimer, Eugen has given me free access to the DLC, so a big thanks to them. Also, please remember that this was recorded on a preview build, so what you see may be subject to change. If you'd like to read the description on the right-hand side, feel free to pause the video and take a look, but we're going to be jumping straight on in. And as usual, we'll be starting in the Recon tab with our classic uh, sidecar, of course, the BMW R75 with that Recon radio, 6 available in A, 12 available in B. And we have Alf Clutter available in this division. Uh, they can come in with the Kubel MGs if you want to double up on recon units, but no fancy 20 mil units like the 222, unfortunately. Four available in A, eight available in B, and 12 available in C. There is access to the SPW 204. The uh, Panard has the 25 mil AP shell. No HE on this one, unfortunately. One machine gun. Pretty fast for the early game and only 15 points, 6 available in phase A. Then we have the AS4220 mil. This is actually a very good recon vehicle because not only can it be used as a 20 mil auto car, it can also be used as AA. Comes in at one vet, you get 3 in phase A. Has that breader, which is pretty effective against light armoured vehicles and infantry. And also, like I mentioned, can shoot at aircraft. Provides you with radio as well, which is really nice. Then we have the Aufklader Panzer II. Five available in A at one veterancy. Another decent 20mm vehicle. Tank, I guess, in this case. 40mm of frontal armor is very decent for bouncing uh, the AT rifles that you might come up against. So, very effective against enemy infantry. And also deals with light armor. Then we have the first of the fascist Italian troops, the Decima Esploratori. These guys have eight Berettas and a HE bundle grenade. They are available six in B and nine in C at one veteran C. And you can see that they have exceptional stealth because they have the commando trait. So the commando trait, it allows them to take less suppression at any range. It makes them take less damage within 100 meters, 20% less. And yeah, they are, of course, ex exceptional stealth. Moving on, we have the uh, Fusilier. Fusiliers are the standard nine man recon squads. We've seen these before. Three available in A, six in B, and nine in C, available at one veteran C. Let's move on to the infantry tab. First of all, we have the Grenadier 15W. These guys are reserve troops, and you can see we have the new model infantry here. We've got these guys with, like spectacles, and we got this uh, chunky lad at the front. MP40, 7 car 98s, and MG34. 20 points apiece. You get 12 in phase A, 24 in B, and 32 in C. Your 9 strength disheartened, obviously, going to fall back automatically. Uh, if they get pinned down, so do be wary of that. They also take more suppression than a normal squad. And we have the Pioneer Führer. These guys are decent leaders, actually, because they can trade well if they get bumped into at close range. This HE uh, can get a kill or two. Like, say, if you bump into a squad that doesn't have close range tools itself, you can actually trade up with these quite nicely. But yeah, three available in Phase A at one vet. Um, no interesting transports for them, unfortunately. Then we have more of these Italian troops, the Decima. These guys have seven Berettas and an MG42. If you catch someone out, heavy to light cover with one of these, even heavy to no cover, and you get that 150 meter range on them, they are going to get absolutely decimated. <laughs> yeah, anyway, eight strength commando trait again. You get 18 in B and 27 in C. Pretty good availability on these, to be honest. Then we have the Decima RDT. Available 12 in B and 24 in C. Forced in at one vet. You get six Berettas and two Bredas. Now, Bredas technically class as automatic rifles, so they will be able to be used within the 100 meter range, making these actually very good close range squads, even though they have two machine guns. And 
They also get the Panzerfaust there. Then we have the Decima Leader, three man squad with Panzerfaust and smoke grenade. Commando trait, very good stealth. Uh, you get four of these in B and six of them in C. Nice radio leaders. A little bit low on numbers, though. I would prefer a higher strength. And we got Grenfjörder. Your standard Grenfjörder, two MP40, two Car 98s with the smoke. Three available in A, six in B, and nine in C. Then we have the Luftwaffe Jäger, uh, ZBV. These guys are actually pretty chunky squads. Um, they are fanatical. They have four MP40s, 10 SVTs, and the MG34, making them absolute menace at range. Like 15 strength with SVTs, 6 in A, 12 in B, 25 points. This is a very, very good squad. Very good squad indeed. You only get one of them, though, one card of them. Then we have the Pioneer 15W. These guys have two MP40s, seven car 98s, the MG34. Uh, eight available in A, 16 available in B. They also have, of course, the HE grenade, which makes them a Pioneer unit, and uh, they are disheartened. This is actually pretty good for a close range infantry unit because the disheartened trait will mean that you can always fall back when you need to because you're going to be taking a little bit extra suppression from those close range engagements you will throw the grenade and then you'll be able to instantly fall back every time what happens sometimes with high vet infantry squads is that they don't take enough suppression for you to click the fall back when you throw the grenade um, and then you end up taking more damage than you need to anyway moving on we have the Panzergrenfuhrer Three MP40s, two car 98s of smoke. Nice setup. Three, six, and nine available. Five man squad with smoke uh, for a leader is actually really nice because it obviously keeps them alive. Um, uh, lots of utility with that smoke. It's very useful indeed. Then we have Pranzer Grenadier, 41. These guys are actually pretty awesome. Um, eight available in A, 16 in B, 24 in C. They are a 12 man Panzergren squad. Usually Panzergren's a 10 man and they have two MGs. Um, two MG42s. In this case, MP40, nine car 98s, and then two MG34s. Now, MG34s, of course, not as good as MG42s, but still very good. And again, the extra, having the extra men makes these very, very beefy squads. So, yeah, 8, 16, 24, and upvetting them is really, really effective uh, with the veteran C curve for these Panzergrands. Then we have the Panzergren 41 with the Panzerbuchser. So they basically have the Panzerbuchser instead of the Panzerfaust, but they cost the same. Um, so generally I would go for the Panzerfaust whenever you can. Let's move on to the tank tab. First of all, we have the Italian P40. This has a 75mm gun, 75mm frontal armor. It's a decent tank. I mean, it classed as a medium tank here. I think for the Italians, it was technically a heavy tank. But six available in A, it's a good medium armor option. Then we have the Stug 3 with that classic 135 millimeters of penetration. It can be two vetted very well. I would always recommend two vetting your Stugs because they get such high rate of fire. 10 round per minute rate of fire is very, very effective. Five available in A, uh, 10 available in B, and uh, 15 in C. Uh, yeah, you just your standard stug there. Then the leader variant, of course, two available in A. Then we have the Tiger E, two available in A, four in B, and six in C. You're forced to bring these in at one vet, which removes a little bit of the availability on them. But otherwise, classic 88 with its 165 millimeters of penetration with 125 millimeters of frontal armor. It can deal with anything up to like a T34, 85 pretty well. Um, T-34-85s will start to have a chance of penetrating these and then anything beyond that of course um, will definitely do the do the job but yeah and a tiger and then the leader tiger available in A uh, two of them there then we have the support tab We've got 50mm mortars to start off with it can be brought in with the Kettengrad if you want 5 available in A, 10 in B, 15 in C uh, micro heavy option with only 520 meters range these uh, small caliber mortars are only really good for the Soviets because the Soviets get extra range on theirs uh, this is the Italian equivalent available in B and C 12 and 18 availability then we have the Borgvard the Borgvard is 
a remote controlled explosive it basically you drive it to the enemy and then you press the de detonate button and they explode and you get four and eight eight and b and there's actually two cards in this division which is <laughs> quite interesting so i think in my division i have both cards i'm just trying to like see if i can uh, get some funny moments with these but do bear in mind they will friendly fire so <laughs> be careful then we have the MG-34s, manned by the disheartened troops. Six available in A, 12 in B, and 18 in C. MG-34s are going to be effective. Um, they have 1,250 meter range, so the disheartened trait isn't as much of a problem because most allied MGs are going to be 1,000 meter range. Then we have the IG-18, available four in A, eight in B, and 12 in C. The classic 12 round per minute rate of fire 1500 meter range uh, he option then you have the obice the italian version uh, the model is currently wrong so do bear that in mind uh, but yeah just the italian equivalent of the ig uh, then we have the mg42 squads these available in a b and c 5 10 and 15 availability uh, with this, by the way, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to just be like an IG, but without the gun shield. Um, so yeah, just bear that in mind. Anyway, the DMA munition trucks are available, 4 in B, 6 in C, and Italian supply trucks available in B and C, which means you don't get any Phase A supply from those two cards. And there's the IG-33. Very, very good infantry support gun. Three available in A, six available in B. 2,000 meter range with a lot of damage. A very, very nice option. You've also got the Sturmpanzer, another 150 mil gun to work with. Only one available in A, three available in B, and six available in C. If there was two available in A, these would always be worth taking in A, but unfortunately, B is usually the option that you want to go for. Then we have Commanders, Motorcycle Commander, Commander on foot, and the Stoke 3 Commander. Moving on to the anti-tank tab, we have the Panzerrek to start off with. One card available of these, 4, 8, and 12 availability, with 200 meters uh, penetration on that Panzerrek. Very, very good to your infantry squad. Then there's the Italian Breda with the 47 mil gun. This has crazy rate of fire, very, very strong against light vehicles, but unfortunately only available in phase B. So it kind of limits uh, when you're going to want to use these. And we have the Marta 3 available as well in phase A and B, 4 in A, 8 in B. Gets the 76 mil gun mounted in it with the 1,500 meter range. Decent penetration, 130 millimeters. Uh, good for taking on medium armor and trading up due to its low cost. We have the pack of 38 available only in phase 8 at one veteran seat. You get six on a card. They come with the APCR shells with 150 mils of penetration and the standard AP rounds. Uh, very nice indeed. And then we have the pack 40s, of course, three available in A, five available in B, and eight available in C. Two cards of these. Classic setup with 190 mil APCR and the 145 mil AP shell at 1,700 meters range. And we have the Elephant available in this division. So there you go, your big boys coming out. One available in A, two available in B, four available in C. 245 points, it's definitely an investment and you need to make sure that you have the infrastructure to play around it before you really bring it in. Otherwise, it's just going to get bombarded, bombed and so on to death. You really need to make sure that you have a constructed push and bring this in to support from the rear. Uh, it's going to a big old 88 KWK 43 with the 230 mils of penetration. Very, very nice. Nothing really going to be penetrating this much in the front armor with the 190 millimeters of frontal armor there. Have you gone to the anti air? Anti air is very, very light in this division, as you can see. Uh, three activation slots and three options. You got 20 mils, which don't come in with 20 mil vehicles. Six available in A, nine in B, and 12 in C. You got the 37 mil option, which is uh, pretty good. 
uh, available in A, B, and C. And then you have the STK of Z71. This is going to be your phase A option because it's only available in phase A. Then you have the artillery tab. First of all, the Beerbachter, the uh, spotters here with the two MP28s and the smoke grenade. Useful if you need a bit of extra recon and radio and you want to save in the recon tab, uh, like avail um, availability or activation points. Then there's a the battery filler. Your artillery leader, just a reminder that the artillery leader trait now has changed. It does provide leadership like it did before, but it also now provides radio to tube artillery. That does not include mortars or rocket uh, units, only tube artillery. And it also gives a dispersion buff, uh, or like it decreases the dispersion of artillery that it is nearby. But again, that only affects tube artillery, not radios. Not more, uh, not uh, sorry, not mortars, not rockets. Then we have the 81mm mortars available. There's two cards of these, four available in A, eight in B, 12 in C, but these are not radio mortars. And there's 75mm Italian gun, the Obici uh, 75, with the eight available in B, 12 available in C. If these were available in A, they'd be uh, something to consider, but otherwise, I'm not so sure. Uh, there is the 105. Italian gun as well, available six in B and nine in C. That does have radio, of course, making it a little bit more effective. 120 mil mortars are on the plate here. We've got two cards of these available, two available in A, four available in B, eight available in C. If you want to go for 120 mil mortar spam in this deck, you definitely can. Then we have the A19, the 122mm Russian gun. You can get four of these in B and six of them in C. They can be brought in with multi-munition trucks. Um, there is only six multi-munition trucks available though. I'm not sure if this is going to change, but normally there's eight. So there you go. Actually pretty decent artillery. This has very, very small dispersion as it is. If you put a battery Führer near it, these could be really nasty counter battery. And there's a 149 Italian M19. This is big boy, 149 mils of penetration, uh, sorry, not penetration, um, 149 mil round. It's actually got a heat round with 160 millimeters of penetration, but only 30% accuracy. Um, and that's only at 750 meters range as well. <laughs> so bear that in mind. But uh, one available in A, two available in B, and four available in C. There's two cards of those available. We have the Lorraine on 150mm mechanized unit, two available in A, four available in C. Actually pretty good early game artillery to have, especially considering it has radio. And then we have the Morsa, 220mm, big old Schneider, one available in A, two available in B, and four available in C. There's only one card of these that can be brought in with multi-ammunition trucks. Let's move into the air tab. First of all, we have the Ju88 heavy fighter with the 320 mils uh, in the nose and the machine gun there as well. We've got the turrets, of course. Uh, it's for 60 points, not too bad. You know, it can head on pretty effectively. And if it were to get on the back of an enemy, like bomber or something, then you'd be okay. But the speed is a little lacking for a heavy fighter. We have the JU88D1 as recon. Actually, a pretty good recon option because you can get four on a card in phase A, 60 points, and has very good resilience. BF109G6 is also an option with the 20 millimeter in the nose and the two 13 millimeter machine guns. These are forced to come in at two VET though, two in A, four in B, and six in C. Then we have the Spiviro with the 12 kilogram cluster HE bombs. Cluster HE is notoriously bad in Steel Division 2, but I'd be tempted to try it out. Three available in A and six available in B. And the fact that you do get three in A is maybe something to have a go with. Uh, Focke-Wulf 190s, of course, are available here. We got G3R5 variants. So these are actually bad resilience. So bear that in mind. The A6 gets uh, 
bad resilience as well here. I think it's the F8 that gets medium resilience, which is really nice. But yeah, in this case, we're working with the weaker Vocal Wolf 190s, 250 kilogram bomb, four 50 kilogram bombs. Really nice payload. 110 points in phase A, you can't really go wrong. You get two in phase A, four in phase B, and eight in phase C. For the fighters, you get three available in A, uh, six in B, and nine in C. These get four 20 mils and the two MGs, of course. 605 kilometers per hour speed. A very nice fighter indeed, just lacks the resilience of the F8. Then we have the other payload for the Spivillo. This has the 100 kilogram bombs, 12 available, two in A, four in B for 115 points. Decent payload and uh, availability, honestly. Finally, there is the DO217. This is really, really good. Um, eight 250 kilogram bombs, very nice payload indeed. Uh, 400 kilometer per hour speed, very good resilience. You get two in A, four in B, and six in C. Nice early game bomber, to be honest. Really nice early game bomber. It's not much that's going to be able to shoot this down unless you let a fighter get on its tail. Uh, but you make sure you've got like at least one AA so you can force off enemy fighters, and this should survive in the early game pretty consistently. And there's your lot for the 715th. In the defense tab, I was asked to quickly have a look at this. Um, MG42s, Pac 37 bunkers, and Pac 50 bunkers are available. And that's your lot. Here is a battle group that I made earlier. In phase A, I have the Aufthaler in the recon cars, and I've also got those 20 mils and the Panzer II so that we can really put a lot of pressure on with the 20 mils in the early game. And then I have the Decima Esperatori in phase B and C because they not only act as good recon, but also good close range infantry with those bundle grenades. In the infantry tab, we're going to be relying on the Luftwaffe Jäger in phase A because they are really good chunky squads and the pioneers, disheartened pioneers in phase A for bundle grenades. We've got the Panzergrand 41s with Panzerburkses in phase A as well. It gives us a little bit of range to deal with transports and this one just being a standard line infantry for us. Decima in B with Panzergrand Führer and more Panzergrand 41s. Again, nice chunky Panzergrand squads. Decima in C and Decima RDT in Phase C as well. So plenty of the Italian infantry here, supplemented by the Recon tab for close range infantry later on. Tank tabs going to be Panzer P40s in Phase A with Tiger support, and then Tigers in B and C. We've got IG 33s in the support tab with two sets of Borgfads so that I can spam in 16 of them in phase B should be a lot of fun and the Sturmpanzer I would recommend you switch these out if you're not too experienced in the game because there's going to be plenty of other great options in the support tab or in other tabs that you could take advantage of. In the anti-tank tab, we've got the Panzerschreck and Marder 3 and the Pack 38 in Phase A. I don't have any of the Pack 40s, just Elephants in A and an Elephants in C with extra veterancy uh, so that I can make those accurate shots that are needed later on. In the anti-air tab, actually going pretty light with the SDK Z71 in Phase A and up-vetted Black 37s in Phase B. Artillery tab is going to be 81mm mortars for the early game and then I've got 122mm artillery in phase B and the 122mm artillery in phase C with the Mortier munition trucks uh, to give us extra supply. And then finally in the air tab we've got Focke Wolves in phase A for fighters the DO217 which comes with the fantastic 8 250kg bomb payload and finally in B uh, more for Wolf 190 A6s uh, because I'm lacking anti-air. I'm also lacking supply, of course, um, which I don't get in until phase C. So bear that in mind. This is a, a bit of a meme deck, and I would recommend changing at least one of these out to supply vehicles. And then the other two are like an MG or something in the air tab, something in the artillery tab, or something like that. Uh, so yeah, overall, I actually really like the look of this division. I think it's going to have a lot of prowess in team games, particularly due to the Tigers and Elephants. But in 1v1, it might struggle a little bit just because it's relying on a lot of expensive material to get the job done. But a strong early game with the 20 mils plus Marders and stuff like that, maybe it will work. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what the professionals do, what we'll do with it. But that's it for now from me. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Yeah, bye.